Hi, in this video, we are going to talk about applications of quadratic functions. So basically, these is, this is where you see quadratic functions in the real world. So real world problems involved in setting up a quadratic equation and solving it. So we're just going to look at some examples and um, about three examples and go through each of them. So let's start off with the first example. Um, the first example is uh, you have a rectangular wall of a barn and um, the area of it is 96 square feet sorry i'm looking on my computer over here i have the um, problem up and then its length is four feet longer than twice its width all right so we have a rectangular barn oh my marker not working we have a rectangular barn the area of it is 96 square feet so area represents the measurement of the inside and then it says that its length is four feet longer than twice its width. So four feet longer than, that's going to be four plus, and then twice its width. And it wants us to find the length and the width of the wall of the barn. Alrighty, so what we know is the area, we know the length, and this side is the width. And so one of the things you have to know is that area is equal to length times width. Well, we know that the area is 96, so we'll replace area with 96. We know that the length is 4 plus 2w, so we'll replace length with 4 plus 2w, and then the width is just w. So what we end up having is an equation with one variable, which is very important. We would need to have only one variable in order to solve it if we only have one equation. So we will solve this for w. Um, we would start by distributing the w. And we would get 96 equal to 4w plus 2w squared. And so um, we end up with the quadratic equation. How do we know it's a quadratic equation? Because the highest exponent is 2. Let me get another marker. My marker isn't looking so great. Alrighty, so whenever you want to solve a quadratic equation, you want to get 0 on one side. So we're going to subtract 96 from both sides. And that would give us 0 equal to, and I'm going to write it in order, 2w squared plus 4w minus 96. And if you notice, all of these have a 2 in common. These are all multiples of 2. So we could actually go through and divide everything by 2. And that's legal as long as you divide everything, even the 0 over here, by 2. And so we end up with 0 equal to w squared plus 2w minus 48. So this is the quadratic equation that we need to solve. 0 equal to w squared plus 2w minus 48. And so what we're going to do is we can try to factor this, or we can use the quadratic formula, or you can do completing the square. It's up to you, whichever one you want to do. Um, I'm going to try factoring. So I want to take, so I want to take factors of negative 48 that add to 2. So I need two numbers and multiply to give me a negative 48 that add to 2. And I know 8 times 6 is 48, um, but since it's negative, one of them has to be negative. If I put the negative on the 8, then when I add those together, negative 8 plus 6, I get negative 2. So I'm just going to switch the signs, 8 and negative 6. That gives me negative 48 when I multiply it, and then 8 minus 6 is 2. So these are the factors that I want, 8 and negative 6. So this equation ends up being 0 equal to w plus 8 and w minus 6. So since I have two things that multiply to give me 0, one of these has to be 0. So I take them both and set them equal to 0. So w plus 8 equals 0, w minus 6 equals 0. That gives me w equal negative 8 and w equal to 6. Well, we can't have a negative width because remember w refers to the width. So we have to rule that one out. And so our width is going to be 6. And so it wants us to find the width and the length. So we have to go back and um, substitute in. So we know that the length is 4 plus 2w. So we would go back and substitute the 6 in for w to figure out what the length is. So that's 4 plus 12, which is equal to 16. So you end up getting a width of 6 and a length of 16. So um, <clears throat> this will be 6 by 16. And you can check it out. Um, do 16 times 6. 
multiply that and you get 96 and then um, you can do twice the width twice the width which is 12 and add 12 to 4 which is 16 and that gives you your length so that's one way to check it so this is how you will work that application of the quadratic equation so let's look at another example in example two we have at a point on the ground 35 feet from the base of a tree the distance of the top of the tree is one feet more than three times the height of the tree find the height of the tree okay so we gotta draw a picture so we got a tree um so we have the tree And then there's a point on the ground, and I'm gonna just say here, I'm gonna come in a little closer. Let's say here, there's a point on the ground, and it says that a, at a point on the ground, 35 feet from the base of the tree. So this distance is 35 feet. This point is 35 feet from the base of the tree. So from here to here, let me erase that. <clears throat> and then it says uh, the distance to the top of the tree so here's the top of the tree. So the distance to the top of the tree is one feet more than three times the height of the tree. So one feet more than three times the height of the tree, which I'm calling H. So here's H. So we end up with a right triangle. And whenever you have a right triangle, you can use the uh, Pythagorean theorem, which says A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So A and B represents the lengths of the sides and C represents the hypotenuse. So A could be 35 or it could be H, either one, it doesn't matter. And B is H. So we get 35 squared plus H squared and C is always going to be the side opposite the right triangle is 1 plus 3H squared. So we end up with the quadratic equation. So we end up with 35 squared, which I don't know off the top of my head. I'm using my calculator. 35 times 35 is 1225 plus H squared. And then that equals 1 plus 3H squared. So I'm going to write that out so I can multiply. So 1225 plus H squared equal 1 times 1, which is 1. 1 times 3h, which is 3h, 3h times h, which is 3h times 1, which is 3h, and 3h times 3h, which is 9h squared. So if you combine your like terms, you get the 3h and the 3h, which is 6h. And so we end up with the quadratic equation, and the reason we know it's a quadratic equation is because the height of exponent is 2. So that means we need to get zero on one side. So I'm going to uh, move this H square over and this 1225 over to the other side. So this H square will combine with that nine H square. So we'll get zero over here. And I'm gonna write it in order. I'm gonna write the squares first. So we get nine H squared minus one H squared, which is eight H squared plus six H, cause there's nothing to combine with that. And then one minus 1225, is negative 1224 and so we end up with a quadratic equation that looks like this and so um, I noticed that 2 goes into all of those so we can make the number smaller by dividing everything by 2 and so we'll get 0 equal 4h squared plus 3h minus what is that 612 <clears throat> All right, so you don't have to divide by 2, but dividing by 2 makes the number smaller. And so this is the quadratic equation we end up having to solve. So we're actually going to have to solve this by, um, we could try factoring, but the numbers are going to be really big. So let's go with the quadratic formula. That's going to be the easiest way. So we're going to use the quadratic formula. So remember, if you watch the other videos, um, x is equal. In this case, we don't have x. We have h. So I'm going to write H equal. H is equal to negative B in our case. B is 3. So negative B plus or minus square root of B squared minus 4 times A, which is 4, times C, which is negative 612. 
all over 2a and a is 4. <clears throat> so we got x equal or h equal negative b plus or minus square root b square minus 4ac all over 2a. And then the rest is just a matter of simplifying. So negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 9. These two negatives is going to become positive. But we need to know what is 4 times 4 times 6, 12. Again, I'm using my calculator. And that's 97, 92. All over, oh, hold on, look at all over 8. <clears throat> so H is equal to, um, let's figure out what 9 plus 97, 2 is. 97, 92. That's 9801. So negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 9801. All over 8. And then let's see if the square root of that number comes out to be a perfect square. Yep, that's 99. So h is equal to negative 3 plus or minus 99 over 8. So you get two separate answers. h is equal to negative 3 plus 99 over 8. And h is equal to negative 3 minus 99 over 8. Negative 3 plus 99 is 96 divided by 8 is 12 so you get the height is 12 here and then this one you're going to get a negative number so negative 3 minus 99 is negative 102 and divide that by 8 you get negative 12.75 but you can't have a negative height so you can rule that one out so your answer would be 12 so the height of the tree will be 12 feet so we went through that process to figure out the height of the tree you have any questions make sure you put them in the comments below and i will respond okay for this last example we have a rock falls from a tower that is 192 feet high as it is falling this height is given by the formula h equal 192 minus 16 t squared so this is the equation for the height of the rock um how many seconds will it take for the rock to hit the ground um, and the rock in the ground corresponds to h equal to zero. So we want to figure out how long it'll take for the height to be of the rock to be zero. So we're going to replace the height with zero. And this is the quadratic equation we want to solve. And so this, since there is only one t, although it is a quadratic equation, but since there's only one t, you can actually solve this by using the uh, square root property which is just isolate the t, get the t on the side by itself. So I'm gonna add 16t squared to both sides and I get 16t squared equal 192. Then divide both sides by 16 and we get t squared equal to 192 divided by 16, which is 12. And then to get rid of the square, you have to take the square root of both sides and whenever you take the square root of both sides, you have to take the positive and negative square root. So you get t is equal plus or minus uh, the square root of 12. But remember, t refers to time, and you can't have a negative time. So we would only want the positive. So t is equal to the square root, positive square root of 12. And <clears throat> you want to get an approximation for that. So plug in the square root of 12 in your calculator and see what you get. And we get approximately... 3.464 and some more numbers um, and on the homework that I'm looking at it tells you to round it to the nearest tenth so um, this would actually be 3.5 seconds so it'll take approximately 3.5 seconds for the rock to hit the ground if you have any questions <clears throat> excuse me if you have any questions make sure you include them in the comments below if you haven't already make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can um, get more access to more math videos I've created and if you want to know when I upload new videos hit the bell button uh, Thanks for tuning in and I will see you in the next video